today we're going to be looking at accounts receivable. Let's assume that we have $200,000 at the end of the year in accounts receivable. Now, do you think we would get, all, get paid all of that money? More than likely, some of those accounts receivable are going to be bad, meaning the customer isn't going to pay us, especially in today's economy. So if we have $200,000 in accounts receivable, we don't want to put just that on the balance sheet. We want to have something set aside for those customers that aren't going to pay us. And that's called the allowance method. And there's several ways for us to estimate how many of those customers aren't going to be paying us. We're going to look at that in the next video. In this video, what we're going to take a look at is the direct write-off method. The direct write-off method typically is not used because under GAAP, um, it's just not a popular way because it doesn't match our revenues and expenses in the right time period. The entry and direct write-off method is very simple though. When you find an accounts receivable, when you call somebody up and, they, and you find out that they're not going to be paying you, you just write it off. And the entry to write that off would be a debit to an expense account, and we'll call this expense bad debt expense. And let's say they owe us $500. So we would debit bad debt expense, and then all we do is we eliminate the accounts receivable. So we would then credit the accounts receivable for $500. And that would be our journal entry to eliminate that. The problem is, let's take a look at a timeline. Let's say this is the timeline, and this is year end. Let's say that we sold this over here in November. So we recognize the revenue at this time when we establish the accounts receivable. The problem is, when do we find out that this account receivable is bad? Well, likely in this situation, we're not going to find out to maybe February or March. So let's say it's February of the following year. I think you can now see the problem that we have. If we record this entry in the following year, what's happened? We've recorded the expense in this time period, $500 of expense, and we recognize $500 of revenue in this period. So at year end, our revenue would be overstated by $500 because we're actually going to be writing it off in the next year when we find out that they're not paying us. So that's the problem with the direct write-off method. It's typically not used unless you have very, very few write-offs. Or if you're a very small company, you can use this method. But what we're going to emphasize in this chapter is not the direct write-off method. We're not emphasizing this. What we're going to be doing is the allowance method. And the allowance method, we're going to estimate how much is uncollectible. So we're going to be introducing a new account, the allowance for bad debts or the allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, And the allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset account. So if we had accounts receivable of 200000 and let's say that we had 2000 in the allowance for doubtful accounts credit balance, then our net accounts receivable would be the 200000 accounts receivable less the allowance of 2000 so our net accounts receivable would be $198,000. let us look at an example really quickly um, of the allowance method. Let me grab the eraser here. Okay, I'm going to erase this part. And I'm going to assume some information. Let's assume that sales are $1 million. I said that our accounts receivable is 200000 and let's estimate that our percentage of sales that we estimate uncollectible is going to be uh, 1%. So what we do is we take 1% of sales, and that would be $10,000. So 1% of a million would be $10,000. So our entry then would be bad debt expense. Ten thousand, and then the credit would be to the allowance for I'm going to abbreviate here D slash A, meaning doubtful accounts. Ten thousand. So that would be our adjusting entry that we need to make. Now, let's assume that the balance in the allowance currently. Um, is, let me see what I've got here, a $1,000 debit balance. 
Okay, that's what's in the allowance currently. So when we make this entry, let's take a look at a T account. If this is this allowance account, we have a current balance of 1,000 debit. When we do this entry here, our adjustment, we put the 10,000 in the allowance account, so that would give us an ending balance then of 9,000 because we had 1,000 debit, we just credit it from this adjustment, 10,000, so that gets a $9,000 ending balance. So on our balance sheet, what we would have, let me write over here, on our balance sheet, what we would have is accounts receivable, right here, 200,000 less the allowance. Our adjustment was 10,000, but we already had 1,000, so our ending balance is 9,000. So what this says is we have we have net accounts receivable of one hundred ninety-one thousand dollars. So what is this allowance? It's just a dollar amount set aside for those customers that aren't going to pay us. So then, when those customers don't pay us, what happens to the allowance? Well, let's let's use that example again. We call up our customer who owes us five hundred dollars. And this customer says, I'm going bankrupt. I'm not going to have any money to pay you. So you decide at that time, well, I'm going to write it off. Well, to write off an accounts receivable when you have an allowance is to write it off to the allowance. So let me erase this right here. So now this is the entry for the write-off. Let me write that here. The write-off then would be to debit the allowance. That's the purpose of the allowance. $500 and credit, we've got to eliminate the accounts receivable. So we're going to credit the accounts receivable, 500. So what this in essence is doing is it's reducing our allowance because an allowance is a contra, um, contra asset account. So this debit will reduce it. This is an asset accounts receivable. So this credit will reduce the accounts receivable. So let's take a look at our balance sheet after this write-off. What's going to happen to our ending number here? Well, we're going to see nothing's going to happen to it. Because if we reduce this, accounts receivable will now become 199500 And our allowance will be 8500 So the overall impact on accounts receivable is nothing. But that makes perfect sense. Because the impact of that write-off really takes place in the prior year when we estimated the amount that was going to be uncollectible. This is when we estimated. We estimated that 1% of sales was uncollectible. So we took 1%, that was $10,000. Here's our expense. When did we do this expense? We did it last year. When is the write-off? In the following year. What happens when we write it off? Basically nothing. It just reduces accounts receivable, but it also reduces the allowance, which is a contra asset account, by the same dollar amount. So I hope, hope this helps you out. So we've talked about bad debt expense of the direct write-off method, and we've talked about the first allowance method, percentage of sales. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the percentage of accounts receivable and the percentage of accounts receivable aging. These are two different methods under the allowance method. You would not, in your business, use all three. You would select one method and you would go with that. Okay, so hopefully you understand this. If not, watch it again. And then if you under once you get this down, then go on to the next video where we're going to talk about this part of the allowance account. Well, good luck, class.